Hello everyone, I hope you are all staying healthy and safe. I miss everyone very much and I cannot wait to be back in the classroom with all of you. Today we're going to begin Act 5 of Romeo and Juliet. So if you have your script, you can open up to page 82. If you do not have your script, remember you can find a copy of it in the Class Informations and Materials folder or you can simply follow along in this video. So Act 5 brings us into Mantua, where Romeo has been waiting word from Frere Lawrence. If you remember, the plan before he left Juliet was to wait in Mantua until he would be allowed back to Verona. While Romeo is waiting for that letter, Lord and Lady Capulet decide to marry Juliet off to Count Paris. And we know this is a problem. Juliet goes to see Frere Lawrence and Frere Lawrence comes up with a new plan. He gives Juliet this potion that she is to take right before she goes to sleep. And it's supposed to induce a death-like sleep. It will stay in her system or keep her asleep for a total of 42 hours. The plan is to put Juliet in the Capulet tomb and then send word to Romeo to meet Friar Lawrence in the Capulet tomb so that they are there when Juliet awakes. This way, everyone believes that Juliet is dead while she is able to return back to Mantua with Romeo and live happily ever after. So let's take a look at the beginning of Act 5. While we look at this act, I want us to think about how fate once again interferes with the plans that Romeo and Juliet have. And I also want us to think about how their own choices, their own actions, interfere with the plans that they had decided on together. So let's take a look at scene one. We're on page 82. of sleep, my dreams presage some joyful news at hand. My bosom's lord sits lightly in his throne, and all this day an unaccustomed spirit lifts me above the ground with cheerful thoughts. I dreamt my lady came and found me dead, strange dream that gives a dead man leave to think, and breathe such life with kisses in my lips that I revived and was and Emperor, I me, how sweet is love itself possessed, when but love's shadows are so rich in joy. So if you remember, uh, Romeo's friend Mercutio talked about dreams, and he said that lovers are idle, and all they do is daydream, and they should never really trust these dreams. Let's take a look at the modern translation to understand what Romeo is talking about. So he goes and he says, If I can trust my dreams, then some joyful news is coming soon. Love rules my heart, and all day long a strange feeling has been making me cheerful. I had a dream that my lady came and found me dead. It's a strange dream that lets a dead man think. She came and brought me back to life by kissing my lips. I rose from the dead and was an emperor. Oh my, how sweet it would be to actually have the woman I love when merely thinking about love makes me so happy. So the irony here is that Romeo had a dream that he was dead and Juliet went to find him, gave him a kiss and brought him back to life. We know that Romeo is going to soon find out that Juliet is in a dead-like sleep and he will need to wait for her to come back to life. So as Romeo is talking aloud about his dream, his servant, Balthasar, enters. This servant is not sent to Romeo from Freyr Lawrence. He's coming from the Montagues. News from Verona. How now, Balthasar? 
Dost thou not bring me letters from the fire? How doth my lady? Is my father well? How fares my Juliet that I ask again? For nothing can be ill if she be well. Then she is well, and nothing can be ill. Her body sleeps in Capel's monument, and her immortal part with angels lives. I saw her laid low in her kindred's vault, and presently took post to tell it you. Oh, pardon me for bringing these ill news, since you did leave it for my office, sir. So, Romeo finds out that Juliet is dead. Balthasar has no idea about the plan that Friar Lawrence and Juliet put together. He's just going over to Mantua, telling Romeo what he saw, that they were laying Juliet's body in a tomb. So now Romeo believes that Juliet is dead. Take a look at his reaction. Is it even so? Then I defy you, stars. Thou knowest my lodging gave me ink and paper and hire post horses. I will hence tonight. I do beseech you, sir, have patience. Your looks are pale and wild and do import some misadventure. Tush. So let's take a look at how Romeo reacts. He finds out again that, uh, that Juliet is dead. And he goes and he says, is it really true? Then I rebel against you, stars. If you remember, back in the balcony scene, Romeo and Juliet were playing with this word. Romeo called Juliet the sun, while Rosaline was the moon. After Romeo and Juliet marry, Juliet says that she would love to see Romeo cut up into little stars so that he can light up the sky. So now, Romeo goes and he says that if it is true that Juliet is dead, he is rebelling against the stars. Here the word stars means more of destiny, that he is he's going against what the gods um, had destined for his Juliet. And because he finds out that Juliet is dead, he wants to write to his parents and he wants to go back to Verona. His servant, Balthasar, asks him to have patience. This is important to note as well, because throughout the play, Friar Lawrence has asked both Romeo and Juliet to have patience, and they haven't been able to have that. Thou art deceived. Leave me, and do the thing I bid thee do. Hast thou no letters to me from the friar? No, my good lord. No matter, get thee gone, and hire those horses. I'll be with thee straight. Well, Juliet, I will lie with thee tonight. Let's see for means. Oh, mischief, thou art swift to enter in the thoughts of desperate men. I do remember an apothecary. And hereabouts are dwells which late I noted, in tattered weeds, with overwhelming brows, culling of simples. Meagre were his looks, sharp misery had worn him to the bones, and in his needy shop a tortoise hung, an alligator stuffed, and other skins of ill-shaped fishes, and about his shelves a begly account of empty boxes, green earthen pots, bladders, and musty seeds, remnants of pack thread and all cakes of roses were thinly scattered to make up a show. Before we go on with Romeo's lines, let's take a look at the modern translation. He tells himself uh, that he's going to be with Juliet, and he needs to find a way to do that. And he goes in and he says that he has some destructive thoughts that are coming quickly to his mind, because he's a desperate man. He says, I remember a pharmacist who lives nearby. I remember he wears shabby clothes and has bushy eyebrows. He makes drugs from herbs. He looks poor and miserable and worn out to the bone. He had a tortoise shell hanging up in his shop as well as a stuffed alligator and other skins of strange fish. There were a few empty boxes on his shelves as well as green clay pots and some musty seeds. There are or were a few strands of string and mashed rose petals on display. So 
as Romeo is thinking about how he can be with Juliet, he remembers that he saw a pharmacist. And this pharmacist can make drugs from weeds. So I want us to think about what Romeo wants to do. Let's take a look at the continuation of his line. Noting this penury to myself, I said, And if a man did need a poison now, Whose sale is present death in Mantua, Here lives a caitiff wretch would sell it him. Oh, this same thought did but forerun my need, And this same needy man must sell it me. As I remember this should be the house, Being holiday, the beggar's shop is shut, Oh, no! So he's walking down the street and he finds the, the pharmacist, the apothecary. And he says, noticing all this poverty, I said to myself, if a man needed some poison, which they would immediately kill you for selling in Mantua, here is a miserable wrench who'd sell it to him. Oh, this idea came before I needed the poison. But this same poor man must sell it to me. As I remember, this should be the house. Today's a holiday, so the beggar's shop is shut. Hey, pharmacist. So Romeo wants some sort of poison to be able to kill himself. Romeo says that if a man needed some poison, this particular pharmacist would be the one to give it to him because he's very poor and he would exchange the drug for some money. So Romeo wants to kill himself. So the apothecary hears Romeo calling out and he goes to him. Who calls so loud? Come here, the man. I see that thou art poor. Hold, there is 40 ducats. Uh, let me have a dram of poison. Such soon speeding gear as will disperse itself through all the veins that the life weary taker may fall dead and that the trunk may be discharged of breath as violently as hasty powder fire doth hurry from the fatal cannon's womb. So what two qualities does Romeo expect from the poison? Take a look at the modern translation. The apothecary man comes. Romeo says, I see that you are poor. Here are 40 ducats. Let me have a shot of poison, something that works so fast that the person who takes it will die as fast as gunpowder exploding in a cannon. So these are the two qualities that Romeo expects from the poison. That it works fast and that it's as explosive as a cannon. So take a look at the apothecary's response. Such mortal drugs I have, but Mantua's law is death to any he that utters them. But thou so barren full of wretchedness, and fierce to die. Famine is in thy cheeks, need and oppression starveth in thy eyes. Contempt and beggary hangs upon thy back. The world is not thy friend, nor the world's law. The world affords no law to make thee rich, then be not poor. But break it, and take this. My poverty, my poverty. So the apothecary tells Romeo that he does have lethal poisons, but it's against the law to sell them in Mantua. And if he is caught selling them, he would be put to death. Romeo goes and he says that he is not afraid, that he wants to die. He goes on and he says sorry, that anyone can see that the pharmacist is a beggar, that he's poor, and that Romeo is willing to break the law to make him rich, and he hands him the money. So let's see what happens next. Of thy will consents. I pay thy poverty and not thy will. Put this in any liquid thing you will. And drink it off, and if you had the strength of twenty men, it would dispatch you straight. There is thy gold. Worse poison to men's souls, doing more murder in this loathsome world than these poor compounds that thou mayst not sell. I sell thee poison, thou hast sold me none. Farewell, buy food, and get thyself in flesh. 
gum. Cordial and not poison. Go with me to Juliet's grave, for there must I use thee. And that brings us to the end of the first scene of Act 5. Take a look at what Romeo says to the apothecary and to himself at the end of the scene. He goes and he says, there is your gold, money is a worse poison to men's souls, and commits more murders in this awful world than these poor poisons that you've not allowed to sell. I've sold you poison, you haven't sold me any. Goodbye. Buy yourself food and put some flesh on your bones. I'll take this mixture, which is a medicine, not a poison, to Juliet's grave. That's where I must use it. So that's Romeo's plan, to arrive at the Capula tomb, drink the poison so that he can lie with Juliet. Now remember, in the beginning, I asked you to think about how fate interferes with Romeo and Juliet's plans and how their own actions, their own choices, interfere with the decisions that they made before Romeo left Mantua. Here, Romeo has decided to leave Mantua because obviously he believes that Juliet is dead, but he hasn't heard word from Friar Lawrence, and that was the instruction he was given when he left. Let's take a look at scene two of Act Five. Holy Francis! Holy Franciscan Friar, brother! Oh, this same should be the voice of Friar John. Welcome from Mantua. What says Romeo? Or if his mind be writ, give me his letter. Going to find a barefoot brother out, one of our order, to associate me here in this city visiting the sick, and finding him, the searchers of the town, suspecting that we both were in a house where the infectious pestilence did reign, sealed up the doors and would not let us forth, so that my speed to Mantua there was stayed. Who bear my letter? So this is a little ironic, considering the situation that we're in today. Let's take a look at what happened to the letter that Friar Lauren sent to Romeo in Mantua. Scene 2 begins with Friar John, a new character. This is one of Friar Lawrence's brothers, or a uh, friend, and he sent him to Mantua to give Romeo the letter. And so Friar Lawrence wants to know what happened. Did you give Romeo the letter? Friar Lawrence comes back with the letter and he says, I went to find another poor friar from our order to accompany me. He was here in this city visiting the sick. When I found him, the town health officials suspected that we were both in a house that had been hit with the plague. They quarantined the house, sealed up the doors, and refused to let us out. I couldn't go to Mantua because I was stuck there. So now we know that if Romeo would have waited a little bit, he probably would not have received the letter from Friar Lawrence. But we also know that Romeo has no idea about the plan that Friar Lawrence and Juliet have put together. And then to Romeo. I could not send it. Here it is again. Nor get a messenger to bring it. These so fearful were they of infection. Unhappy fortune. By my brotherhood, the letter was not nice, but full of charge of dear import. And then they... So I want you to keep in mind that Friar Lawrence uses that word fortune, which has come back to us several times throughout the play, right? Both Romeo and Juliet don't have good luck. We talked about that word fortune meaning luck. Romeo said that he was fortune's fool. And here, Friar Lawrence is using the same word. He says, unhappy fortune. How can it be that we have such bad luck? That letter was very important. Letting it may do much danger. Friar John, go hence. Get me an iron crow and bring it straight unto my cell. Brother, I'll go and bring it. Me. Now must I to the monument alone. Within this three hours will fair Juliet wake. She will pursue me much that Romeo have had no notice of these accidents. But I will write again to Mantua and keep her at my cell till Romeo come. Poor living corse, closed in a dead man's tomb. 
So again, Friar Lawrence needs to think on the spot and figure out what he can do to solve the Snoop problem. We know that Romeo is on his way to Verona. Friar Lawrence believes that Romeo is still in Mantua. So let's take a look at the new plan. One, he asks Friar John to get him an iron crowbar so that he can go break into the Capulet's tomb because he knows Romeo will obviously not be there in time for when Juliet awakes. Take a look at the last part. He says, now I must go to the tomb alone. Within three hours, Juliet will wake up. She'll be very angry with me that Romeo doesn't know what happened. But I'll write again to Mantua, and I'll keep her in my cell until Romeo comes. That poor living corpse. She's shut inside a dead man's tomb. So if Romeo would have just stayed in Mantua a little longer, now we know that he would have received word that Juliet is safe and sound in Friar Lawrence's cell waiting for him to come get her. And this brings us to the end of scene two of Act Five.